Hello everybody, Cone Dodger here, and welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. And we are continuing on our Vector Automotive mini-series challenge that has been going on now for four episodes. And uh, that means that we are ready to advance two years into the future and start to refine our model lineup. Two years is not enough time to start a new generation of any car. Uh, and at this point, I don't see any need to add any cars to our lineup. But we need to go through and make some refinements based on some things I noticed that were restricted by either uh, the, the amount of things we could change in the engine test or just things that I noticed after the car was already built and, and tested uh, and things that you guys noticed and commented on. Uh, and maybe some things we'll find out right now. But let's start with the first car that I built, and that was the Vector Cigarro. Cigarro, Cigarro. Um, still up to my discretion as to how those are pronounced, and I say every way. Alright, so let's revise this model. So the Cigarro had a... kinda sounds like... Cigarro. <laughs> Cigarro. Uh, anyway. Cigarro came in with a total of 105.3 in the model designer kind of uh, points tally here and uh, it was slightly slightly behind actually it was pretty pretty far behind the competition that we decided to go against the Toyota Camry uh, there was nothing really really striking to change here uh, there were some minor changes I could do with the engine so let's do that Alright, so if we choose the 19SC that was in this car and revise it, uh, we will remember that it was a single point EFI setup and uh, made 97 horsepower, 190, 109, not 190 foot pounds. Uh, and overall was a decent little engine. It, uh, it did everything we needed. 86.4 was the octane we chose to use. We only used 84.2. Uh, and if we use some rough math there, I can see that. I could probably add about half a point of compression uh, to the engine and it would still be safe so I could go all the way to 9.5 it's not really what I want to do with this engine it's it's a uh, it's a street car and we don't want to we don't really want to go too crazy with the compression so I'm only gonna go up to 9.2 and I'm going to give it some fuel timing back or sorry, some ignition timing, not fuel timing. It's not, uh, uh, it's not direct injection, that's for sure. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit hard to judge how far I can go with that because we're also going to make an improvement that is desperately needed in that the year is now 1992 and the music will dramatically change. Okay, so not so much drama. Uh, but that means we can choose the multi-point setup. That is going to be the only changes I make to this particular engine. Uh, like I said, this is a mid-generation kind of update. It's not a new model, so not going too crazy with it. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the test mode and see if I can see anything astray before we do our one dyno test. Nothing astray, and uh, it looks good. Looks like we're making over the 100 horsepower mark now, so uh, should be good news here. I think we're ready to test. Let's see. Okay, so, looks like a nice little bump in horsepower, up to 103 from 97, and uh, torque's about the same. Uh, actually, we lost a little torque, didn't we? It was 109, now it's 103. Uh, nothing, nothing too major there. I'm still way low on the fuel octane, however, so I'm going to use a little bit of math uh, that I believe... I'm trying to remember who, who made this comment. I believe it was... was uh, well, I don't really know how to say his username, but Kubos? Kubos? Uh, we'll say Kubos, and uh, please correct me on how to say your your uh, your username, but 
uh, he says about 0.1 compression is equal to 0.3 to 0.4 AKI, uh, or sorry, he says about 0.4, 0 0.5 uh, RON, which we I do not use, I use AKI, so a little bit less for AKI, about 0.3 to 0.4, and we have about two full points to go, so that would mean... Um, I believe that would mean that if I gave it even like 0.6 uh, compression, we would still be safe. I'm going to attempt that right now, and uh, it's going to push us into that kind of range where I, I said we wouldn't go, but uh, we're still in normal, so I'm, I'm not too worried about it. I want to see just where that puts us. Alright, so that worked out pretty well, 85.3, uh, 86.4, so I could have gone a little bit more, but that helps me helps me pinpoint that compression to knock ratio, or compression to octane ratio, uh, a little bit better for the future. So I'm going to say it's probably closer to the 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. Uh, I am using, I'm using AKI, aren't I? <laughs> uh, good question, good question. Uh, yes, okay. Um, oh, I just remembered that I have my mouse cursor turned off again. Let me let me stop the recording and fix that real quick. Alrighty, so mouse cursor back. Uh, yes. So what was I talking about? Um, da, 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 85.3 uh, is close enough, and I am using AK. That's what I was talking about. All right. Well, let's go ahead and save this. Uh, do I need to save that for 90 at all? Mm, no, I don't see any reason to save it. Uh, so we'll just replace it, and then we will choose it. So for this one, I think that is going to be it for my changes. Uh, we did a nice little engine update. There was nothing really chassis-wise that uh, I was too concerned about. Uh, besides this, <laughs> cooling airflow. That should not be max. Uh, apparently I missed this on a few of them. But we need to lower this down to about here. So this should dramatically improve the efficiency of this car. Uh, lower its drag and uh, it just it is basically a bunch of wasted cooling there. So let's go to the testing menu. Let's look at the detailed stats. Alright, so we lose a little tameness, 34.2. We gain a lot of sportiness, 5.3 versus 4.5, a lot, but it's still a pretty lousy, um, uh, lousy number overall, but it's not supposed to be a sports car. A little bit of comfort gone, good, good increase in prestige, uh, and safety stays the same. But I don't know that this actually helped our total at all. All right, well, 105.1. We actually lost 0 0.2 points on the uh, on the total here, so that just goes to show power and speed aren't everything. Uh, but overall, the stats are much better. If you look at the the economy, stepped up to 27 miles per gallon, which is significantly better. And I would I would say that uh, the economy rating is probably not weighted very highly in here and. Uh, uh, probably, sh I would say it probably should be under. Hmm, good question. What would it be under? I don't know if it's under anything. Uh, I don't see. I don't really see it under anything, no. I, I guess it doesn't really fit to these qualifications. Uh, so, so that does not really help us. And the the prestige of having that top speed increase, the the zero to sixty time didn't really help because we lost the tameness. So, uh, so, or, uh, so power isn't everything. So despite my, uh, my always 
burning desire to make every car faster, uh, that didn't actually help at all in this case. But that's alright, we've, we've at least fine-tuned it and uh, I think probably made a more a more consumer appealing vehicle in that we picked up like five miles per gallon. That's that's a big deal. Uh, and 27 MPG, that's pretty good for a, a 92 family sedan. So we will save this one as the updated version and move on. So the Axis was next. Uh, not too much I wanted to work with here, kind of the same things. Alright, and help out it has. We still have a lot of fuel octane left. Like I said, that going into that multi-point, uh, definitely very good for for the efficiency of the fuel burning. It, uh, uh, it lets more fuel get into the, or a, a better fuel air mix get into the cylinders, so you can afford a little bit more compression. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So if I go to the top end, I can probably go all the way up to a 10 and be and be safe. And I think that's all the changes we're going to make. And we'll go ahead and skip that. Uh, 85.6, so pretty much golden. And that gave us a little, a little bit of a bump in power and torque. Save this guy and replace it. And choose it. And let me look at my notes. Uh, no, nothing else that I really saw to mess with. Again with the cooling airflow, though. I almost wonder if it's not saving that. Ah, because I, I could have swore I changed it on this car. Hmm. Yeah, I almost think maybe it's not saving that value. Ah, well, I'll lower it now. It's it's very possible I forgot it on this one as well. Uh, we'll see. So, let's go to our detailed stats. And it looks like, again, we lost on tameness, gained on sportiness, and gained on prestige, but lost on comfort and safety. Ah, well, safety was the same. Uh, let's see if we uh, lost lost points again, though. So once again on the axis, a loss of points. This time a little bit more dramatic. I'm actually down one whole point. Uh, it was 103.6, now it's 102.6. But once again, that's not the, the end-all, catch-all. Uh, we had a big increase in economy once again. And uh, overall, the stats are good. It's faster. Uh, weighs just a, a hair bit less. Uh, basically everything is improved as far as, as these stats go. Uh, it just didn't, didn't necessarily help us out in the points total. Alright, so let's go ahead and see this one. And moving right along, we then had our pony car, sports car type of vehicle, the combat. Probably my favorite of the lineup. Alright, as far as the combat goes, Go to the drivetrain, choose the engine. This one used the Z Killer 30, uh, which is all the way at the bottom. Uh, revise it. Once again, we're using that crappy, crappy single EFI setup, or single point EFI. It's 92, we go multi point. And let's see, what are we on? Everything else. We can give it, actually, I'm going to go with giving it more ignition timing and a little bit more compression should still be okay alrighty so a decent increase in power a great increase in torque uh, responsiveness, smoothness, everything better, basically MTBF significantly better, uh, emissions better, economy better, better all around. And I can give it a, even a little bit more timing. Uh, I'll just do a quick test on that. 
And yes, indeed we can. So we got a nice save value there. Actually took some horsepower away, uh, but gained some torque and responsiveness. So uh, that's, that's just fine and dandy. Oh, and economy. So good all around. We will save that. Move down to the bottom and choose it. So all of this is just kind of uh, kind of busy work. Don't worry, we got some fun stuff coming up after this. Uh, cooling airflow once again. Either was not set or was forgotten. So I will choose the correct value for that and go to testing. So the detail stats on this guy, we had a total of let's see, the combat had a total of 108.6. Uh, this one looks like we had some pretty significant gains. At least a point there and a point there. But once again, some losses, so hopefully this one is at least close. Well, go figure. I have not made a single vehicle better so far by these stats. <laughs> I've just made every single one of them faster. Hey, but remember Vector's slogan, we have a little sports car and everything we build. That's that's important. Uh, trying to make everything a little faster gives us gives the whole company a little bit more prestige. That is how I am rationalizing us. Alright, so let's look. We took a tenth of a second off at 0.60. Uh, we took a tenth of a second off its quarter mile and increased its economy. All good things. All good things. Let's save that guy, but we will be coming back to that one after we do our final, ugh, final changes on the Simba which as stop and go light correctly guessed is Latin for boat because it's a big old boat so same things here and we'll just breeze right through it uh, this car used the high output version of the Z killer so I gotta do the same changes to it multi-point uh, performance intake on this one so it should make a good amount of power uh, it was already at 89.6, so I'm just going to go 10 on that, and just a click on compression. Let's see if it breaks that 260 mark now. Ooh, 265. Nice increase. I think there was something else I needed to look at on this engine, though. Uh, and that was the bottom end. I was informed that forged H-beam is good for high torque, not good for high RPM. So I should be going with steel instead of... Uh, I-beam steel, sorry, instead of the forged H-beam. I don't remember who gave me the clue on that one, unfortunately, but thanks whoever it was. Uh, definitely, definitely something I was overlooking, and if you look at it, virtually the same cost either way, so... Uh, no reason not to go for the I-beam steel. So that should take care of those issues, and it sure does. It increases the MTBF. So I'm going to save the high output now. I guess I would like to replace it. Choose it. Chosen. And let's look at the aerodynamics. Now, this one, <laughs> this one did have the correct airflow, so Every single car I built, besides this one, had the incorrect cooling airflow. Oops. Talk about your first year blues. Alright, well, anyways, uh, let's see what those changes did. Again, increase in the speed aspect and a slight increase in economy. But let's go to the detailed stats. Uh, big drop in tameness, slight increase in sportiness. Slight, uh, major decrease in comfort and a increase in prestige. So, basically, I can already show, or I can already see that this one's going to have less points once again. Yep, rounding it out, 192.5 from a previous of 194.1. So, good job, Cone. You've officially made every single one of your vehicles worse, but you made every single one of them faster. So. I consider that a victory. <laughs> oh man. Alrighty, so now that all that grindy work is out of the way, uh, let's do something a little bit more fun. And we are going to choose the Vector Combat, again my favorite vehicle in the lineup, 
and we're going to make a concept car that is basically as raced car out as we can possibly make this car just for fun. So revise the model, go to the drivetrain, that's going to be the first place we start. I'm going to make it all wheel drive, drive one and reduce your engine base space. Your current engine choice will be removed. Yes, I want to continue. Can I still use the Z Killer? Yes, I can. And I can use the high output version, but I'm not going to use the high output version because I'm going to make some changes to it. Uh, there's no reason not to, and there's going to be no restriction on this. This is all for fun and games. We're going to make this as crazy as possible. I want to build a car that when we bring it to the car show, people are just going to be like, dropping their jaws when they see it because of its spectacular stats and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see about crazy fying this thing up. That is all good there. I'm gonna do a turbocharger setup. Uh, let's do a large and do performance, a standard performance turbo for right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and test that. Actually, I know I know for sure I will need to drop the compression down. So let's do that. And let's see just how much power it makes as it stands. None because it wants to explode. Indeed, 93.1. Uh, we'll give it 93.1. And take a little bit of timing. Now we'll test it. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. 364, 355. Uh, required cooling, obviously we're gonna need a lot more than this. Your car can all cool, 191. Don't worry, we'll fix it. All right, uh, let's see. I believe I'm probably needing more exhaust pipe. Yep, that was, that was limiting indeed. And I don't think we need that much muffler on it. Uh, we want it to sound a little crazy. Probably go higher on the RPM limit as well. Alright, this is great and all, 381 and 355, but we need more than that. I, I really want to get over that 400 mark, so uh, let's do some changes to maybe maybe give it even a little bit more oomph. It doesn't have to be drivable, it just has to be... Uh, it just has to have some crazy stats. Alright, so now with the giant turbo set up, maybe we'll cross that 400 mark. Probably not nearly as drivable, but should make that peak horsepower. Oh yeah. Not just 400, but we actually went up to 522 horsepower. Yep, we're going to need a lot of cooling on this guy. 648. Alright. This is going to be the Z-Killer 30 Special Edition. We'll save that and not overwrite the other one because uh, this is de definitely not a streetcar engine. Alright, go back. Choose it. Alright, we're going to go with all of this. We're going to go for a, sec uh, a six speed manual this time. Uh, estimated top speed is 225. And I'm going to give it every bit of that and some more. And wheel-wise, we're going to go pretty crazy. And we're going to increase the width up to 255 all the way around. Uh, so really filling out those fender wells now. I'm actually going to give it a little bit of rear stagger as well. Uh, just to give it a real mean look. Brake-wise, we're going to go up to four pistons in the front and two in the back. And increase in rotor size as well. Downforce wise, this car did have a rear wing, and uh, we will use it now. Just a little bit. 
Uh, cooling airflow, we needed 648, so let's give it that, and a little brake cooling as well. Uh, so now we're actually using all of those grills. Glad I put those in there. It's like I thought of this all along or something. Interior-wise, let's give it a super light interior uh, with premium 90s entertainment uh, and ABS and premium 90s safety. Uh, really showing where our company is going in the future. Showing that we have the technology and we're not afraid to use it. Maybe we're a little afraid to use it, but but we're not afraid to use it in this concept car anyway. So let's reduce some of this, give it some spring stiffness and some camber. Alright, before I go ahead and call that said and done, I actually want to... I wish I had done this before, but I can, I can still go back and change it now. Uh, make some platform changes, so let's revise this guy and uh, do some body shell changes and uh, spice it up a little bit. Or sorry, some fixture changes. Alright, so I've loaded up our revised Vector Combat concept car up against the regular Vector Combat uh, so we can see the differences. Weight 3229 versus 2635, so gained quite a bit of weight. A lot of that with the all wheel drive system and uh, uh, just some of the other changes. Probably the engine's got a little bit more weight to it as well. Uh, it's a little bit more front heavy. Top speed's about 40 miles an hour faster. Shaved about 8 tenths of a second off our 0 to 60. Uh, looks like about a second and a tenth off of uh, our quarter mile. Took a good bit of off braking off. Cornering G's up to 1.09 from 0 0.99. Uh, economy down to 15.4. Well, we don't care about that. Uh, downforce is up. We now have positive downforce at 124 miles an hour instead of negative downforce or lift. Um, nobody really cares about that, do they? I just want to see you go around the test track, because I know I do. We'll do the airfield one. Alright, so there we have it, and it does it in a time of 87.75, that's that's pretty darn quick. So, uh, minute 17 around the the not-so-top gear test track is a good time, so uh, very pleased with that. And now our company has a Halo car, if you will. Uh, even if it's just a concept, it will get people talking about the about the car and about the company, and uh, maybe they'll, they'll start to expect that kind of quality of vehicle for the future of Vector and uh, get them excited for our next model lineup which will be in 1994 and you will have to wait for that until this series continues I'm not sure if that's gonna be in the next episode or not uh, we may break off and do some other things in between that'll kinda depend on uh, your input and how I'm feeling towards it I've enjoyed doing it so far so uh, if you guys are enjoying it as well then I will continue on with this mini series. And if you're getting a little burnt out on this kind of stuff, I might look for uh, something a little bit different to do here in automation as we as we wait patiently, we're waiting patiently, right? Uh, we wait patiently for the next update, which is, again, on the horizon somewhere. We just can't pinpoint where. 
But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Z-Killer30